Well, the most important thing in a district is to keep communities together. And Amendment 3 does just that. So I'm very supportive of Amendment 3. I think that we need to uh, get the word out and help educate people on what it exactly does. And so I uh, voted for SGR 38 that put that on the ballot and, and I'm supportive of it. Well, the, the bad thing about, about that amendment, Medicaid expansion, is that the, the people who crafted that together uh, really weren't fully transparent. They didn't include a funding mechanism. And if they had, more voters would have been able to realize that this is going to result in either increased cuts to existing programs or increased taxes, because there's got to be some way to pay for this uh, huge uh, increase in this government program. Uh, I was a strong no on that. Uh, and throughout most of my district, in, especially in the rural communities, folks were a no as well. Uh, it's going to do just that. It's going to cause us on the House Budget Committee then to have to deal with finding funding for it, which will then impact District 50 and districts throughout the state um, as we find either cuts or, you know, the other alternative is increased taxes. Uh, you know, we can always consider that, but that's something that I really don't feel that voters would support as they have recently turned down any kind of tax increases that have been put on a statewide ballot. So as a member of the House Budget Committee, I was part of, of uh, folks that have actually looked at, at the federal funding and uh, supported that, that went to districts throughout the state. Uh, at this point, where it really lies is uh, the counties. The counties have until towards the end of the year to spend that funding. If they don't, they lose it. So it's going to be imperative. I, I know Senator Rowden has been very outspoken about the importance and urgency for uh, in uh, Boone County, um, one of the two counties in his district, and Southern Boone's in th District 50, that they sp uh, find ways to make sure that they are spending that and getting that uh, out the door before we would lose that funding. Um, other things, so with regards to COVID, would be uh, there has have been a lot of businesses that have been impacted and uh, jobs, and uh, every, once you impact that, then there's child care issues. So um, that's something that I think we do and should take a look at as much as possible. We need to work with our businesses and, uh, and schools to be able to get uh, uh, you know, help parents have options and be able to get uh, kids kids to school and uh, take a look at child care as well and then make sure that businesses are able to get all the support that we can uh, can give them so that they can reopen and uh, re-employ people and safely get people back to work. From a statewide level, as Governor Parson has said uh, time and time again, we have different uh, You've got different. It's, there's you know there's a lot of diversity throughout the state. So to make just a statewide kind of cut and dry approach, and uh, you know to, to you know I know there's there are some folks that are saying well we need to go back to shutting everything down. Um, as it is, businesses are suffering and uh, things are are are, are very. Um, people are having a very tough time. So I think it's one of those things where, again, people have been educated. Um, there's more PPE that's available. Um, people are, are uh, playing it safe. And we're not seeing in rural communities and areas, I mean, like drastically spiking numbers. Um, you know, interestingly enough, as, so as, as we get more data, I think that's going to help inform more decisions. But no, I, I th I'm, I'm of the uh, mindset that, it, you know, that we are learning more about this virus. We're learning more about how it affects people, but that we need to work to find ways to safely get people back to work and to get things reopened and to get uh, children back in schools for parents who choose that. Um, some parents have chosen, you know, through all this, they kind of liked having kids home and maybe even chosen to homeschool. That's actually on the rise throughout the nation and in Missouri. Um, so parents have that choice there, but I think as much as possible, we need to be able to try to get things back, uh, get Missouri back to business. So the General Assembly did two things, working with the governor to address violent crime, um, House bill, uh, two House bills that we passed and that were passed by the Senate and so are on the way to the governor. I imagine he will very soon sign those into law. Uh, one of them deals with uh, witness protection and creating a program that law enforcement can, 
we can be able to put witnesses in, keep them safe. There's a federal program that does that. This is going to help uh, that be done at the state level. And we will have another special session, as the governor has said, sometime in October to provide the funding for that program. And uh, hopefully that will help people be able to testify and they can solve those crimes um, if people feel safe that they're not going to lose their lives in testifying um, against, uh, you know, in a, in a criminal, uh, you know, against a, when they were witness to a crime. The other part of that is uh, helping law enforcement in, in uh, the residency requirement, removing that um, in St. Louis. So letting folks um, be able to, you know, with, as long as they live within an hour, to be able to be uh, on the police force. And that's going to help um, immensely because they have a shortage of, I think it's more than 140 officers there. And uh, so with homicides going up, uh, that was one of the governor's priorities. And I'm very proud that, uh, you know, as a member of the House, being able to, to support that and that those two bills, you know, are across the finish line. Um, there were three other bills that didn't quite make it through. Um, as it turned out, as we kind of looked into them a little more, there were a lot of questions from constituents and, and some potential maybe unintended consequences. But uh, as the Speaker of the House and the House leadership said, uh, we'll continue working with the governor next session on those priorities.